Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video and welcome to the Git series. And Git series cannot be completed without talking about GitHub. And yes, I know, GitHub is not the only way of saving your Git workflow and entire code base onto an online service. There are others as well. But hey, we cannot do anything. The popular one is the popular one. I don't decide the popularity. So the popularity is with the GitHub. So in this video, we're going to see a little bit of the GitHub and how the workflow actually goes through with that. Now, I am pretty sure some of the beginners who are afraid of doing the things on their own and absolutely hate to read the documentation are going to complain a little bit on this video. And the reason is obvious because I'm going to mention you some of the documentation via the GitHub and I'm going to ask you to do some things on your own. People don't like to do things on their own and that's the reason they leave programming. My advice, read the docs, try to do things on your own. At a max, you're going to just fail and you're going to find solution on some Medium article or chat GPT or some other stack overflow. But it's, it's compulsory and important to read the docs and do some things on your own. And there is a reason behind it. I'll walk you through with that as well. And we'll share you some of the important information. If you're going to the GitHub, obviously, we'll have a discussion about the open source contribution. You need to know what are the cons of it first. Because there was recently an in incident, the entire world was very much unhappy with the incident. I'll share that incident as well. So be cautious about spamming anybody on that. We'll start with there. Uh, but let me show you first that why I'm saying that a lot of people will be unhappy with this video. Might be unhappy. Not always, but might be. So all right. So we are on to the docs.github and we are on the getting started or get started page. This is the documentation of how the GitHub entire workflow goes through. And if you go on to this right hand side, you're going to see that onboarding, using GitHub, accessibility, explore projects, get started with the Git, and a whole lot of things are there. So using the Git, if you open up, this is how the Git subfolders and all these things are being used. And explore the integration, about the integration and whatnot, all these things are here. So using GitHub, you can see there is a GitHub mobile uh, onboarding is also there, how you can start your journey. There's, there's a lot of things, how to create an account, hello world, finishing up and whatnot. Now, if you go ahead and search for this in this docs uh, regarding the SSH, this is the one that you have to search, just go ahead and search for SSH. Now, the reason for, uh, for searching the SSH is that, first of all, let's go ahead and talk about the GitHub. So I'm going to open up this new one and we'll paste the GitHub here. So this is GitHub. This is one of the many such online services which helps you to keep all of your code base along with the Git maintenance and the Git timeline onto a cloud environment so that everything is safe. These days we know that everything is on the cloud and for obvious reason there is no worry about your database getting corrupted, your hard disk getting corrupted, everything is online on the cloud and they manage all these things. And it's not the only service which is available. GitHub is the most popular one but there is a GitLab. Uh, if you wish, you can just go ahead and explore them. We will definitely explore them together, maybe uh, in upcoming videos, not sure about it. So yes, there are lots of such services. Coming back, uh, this is the GitHub, which helps you to build. And there's a lot of options and a lot of things are available in here. We will not go uh, much about them in this video. We'll definitely explore them in the upcoming video. But all you have to do is just sign up for that. Once you do the sign up, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is enter your email, verify the email, set a password, and that's it. You have your GitHub account. You are watching this on YouTube. You obviously have a YouTube account. That means you know how to create the account. Similarly, just go ahead and create an account on GitHub. Once you go ahead to create an account on GitHub, then simply working with the GitHub via the terminal is the most important thing. And you cannot just work with the terminal using your uh, email ID and password. No, GitHub doesn't work like that. GitHub works with the SSH keys. So you have to generate some SSH key and have to save that same key in the GitHub settings page so that GitHub knows that you are the same guy who's communicating. The communication in the GitHub happens on the basis of SSH, not on the basis of uh, email and password. Email and password works well on the web, not on the command line. And since you know, we have been working with the command line all throughout the long, and we want to use GitHub directly from here. By the way, you can also install a GH utility, which is a GitHub utility. You can work through with that. Uh, but first, anyways, since we want to connect the entire thing with the GitHub, we want to have an SSH key on our system. And we want to have an SSH key on the GitHub settings page so that both knows that, yeah, these are the same guys in communicating. So first and foremost, the problem is these are the two things we want to explore. Generating a new SSH key and adding it to the SSH agent 
Uh, and the second one is adding a new SSH key in your GitHub account. These are the two things that we have to go through with. Let's go ahead and open this up in two separate tabs. And by the way, they are just one above the each other. You can just get started with any of them. So the best part is even if you click on Mac, Windows or Linux, the steps are exactly same, almost exactly same. The only thing you have to worry about is on the Windows, when you installed the Git, uh, Git SCM, remember we in the very first video went through the Git dash SCM, you downloaded the Git. It also gives you a new terminal, which is known as Git bash. And I highly recommend to use it instead of the Windows command line. Uh, it's great, but I'm not a big fan of Windows command line. Go ahead and use the Git bash. All the Linux command like LS, PWD, all of them work fine with the Git bash. Now, once you have this, this is the something that you have to do on your own. And it's not much. It's not much. Trust me. So all you have to do is whether you're on Windows or wherever you are, open up the Git bash and run this command. This command and make sure use the email ID which you have used to sign up on the GitHub. And then uh, notice here, if you are using the legacy system that then only you have to use this one. Otherwise, we don't have to use this one. We will go with the latest key, this one. After that, simply go ahead and this creates a new SSH key using the provided email as a label. And it will generate this. Then you have to do is enter a file in which to save. So a uh, Windows user, obviously you can save it into users, you, and then .ssh and this, the ID underscore algorithm. This underscore algorithm will be exactly this algorithm. So in this case, we are using ed25519. So this will be your file name, id underscore id underscore ed25519. So that, that will be your file name. Uh, once you're done with this, uh, then simply you have to enter the passphrase. Uh, if you can keep it empty, that's also fine. But whenever you'll make it, make a git request, you have to enter the same passphrase if you are setting one. I usually don't set one. I'm, I'm just happy with without that. So once you're done with this, uh, adding your SSH key to the agent, this is also you have to do. So all you have to do is uh, just come up here, uh, new admin elevate. So go ahead, use the PowerShell of the Windows and follow these commands. And that's it. You don't have to follow this step. No, nope, nothing. You just have to work through with these two commands, get service name, this is just copy and paste. And then simply SSH add C drive and all of this. That's it, copy paste stuff, that's it. If you are on a Mac, you have to do the exact same stuff on the Mac as well, exactly same. In the Mac, also we have SSH key, so go ahead and use this. This is going to generate the same algorithm, but your algorithm will be saved on different place, which is slash user slash you slash, and again, ID underscore algorithm. This is important to know from directly the documentation itself because these may change in the future. So it's better always to come here and find how to do the things. So this is what you have to do. Again, prompting and all of these are same for you. And for the Win uh, Mac guys, this is what you have to run to make sure the SSH agent in the background. And then, hey, just open up this file and just create the file does it exist. Just go ahead and create this and just add this. So a couple of more steps for you, but that's it. Till here, that's the only thing you have to do. Uh, do not do the things here, generate new SSH for hardware security, we don't need that. So yes, literally three, four steps you have to do on your own. And there are so many articles around it that will help you too. Now the whole idea is once these things are saved, the SSH key is being generated, open up that SSH key in VS Code or any other editor that you want. You have to copy this and paste it uh, at a very special place. Let me show you where that place is. Uh, I'll show you this open source contribution in a minute, but first let's go on to the new and go up here. And what you have to do is uh, you will have exactly same kind of account. And if you go up here on the home page, this is how it looks like. And we're going to just click on this and click on the settings. You also have to do this and you have to click on this SSH and GPG keys. And this is the place where I have to hide some stuff from uh, my screen. So notice here, once you click on this, it gives you all these my existing keys, which I have hidden. Just click on this new SSH key and just give it a title. And we will choose the authentication key, not the sign-in key. Authentication key is fine. And just copy paste this stuff here. And that's it. Now you will be able to communicate with your GitHub account. And by the way, in case you are worrying about that, there are so many articles depicting exactly same. If you go ahead and search for it, how to add SSH key in GitHub, uh, maybe on a Mac, You'll find so many articles and what you'll notice in these articles, let's just say this is the Medium article, that they are pretty old. That is why I'm referring you to documentation. Look at this, 2019. Although not much have been changed, but yeah, some of the algorithms has changed. We don't use RSA anymore. Uh, that's the one thing. But if you'll notice, these are exactly extracted from the same documentation. 
Uh, they use the, just the PV copy to copy that and that's it. Go into your uh, window, this GitHub, it's a pretty old one. Go to the settings, go to SSH keys, uh, simply new SSH key and copy paste it. That's it. That's it. Maybe you have to add your password. That's that's the max. So this is, I, this is why I say this is so much important and a lot of people are not going to be following this. But I cannot do this. The SSH keys are very sensitive. Even I have to hide some of my SSH keys on the screen itself after the post-production. This is important step here. So now that assuming that you have painfully gone through with this whole step of connecting and all these things, uh, I think that's okay and all done. Now what you have to do once you are done with this, uh, go up here and together we are going to be working on uh, creating a new repository and then we will learn how we can talk to the GitHub and how we can work with that. So for that, we are going to go into a new directory. So let's just say where we are. So let's go work with that. We are in the git2, so let's go ahead one directory back and do a quick ls. We, are, we can go into the git3 now. So let's go into cd and we're going to say git3. There we go. Uh, nope, my bad. Git3, there we go. And now we are obviously into the git3. Let me go ahead and change my code editor's uh, directory as well. Just give me a second, I'll drag and drop onto this one and we are learning the git and we are in the git3. So I'm going to just drag and drop into this one here. Now we are into this fresh repository where we are having all these things. Now let's just say we are building a website and we know the workflow of it. Now only thing extra that we have to do is connect everything to the GitHub and push the things onto the Git itself. Let's go ahead and try this. I'm creating a really amazing website. I'm going to call this one as index.html. I'll use a basic HTML docs here. I'll just say uh, git website and a simple h1 that has some of the lorem text. That's it. That's my website. Now, how does the flow of this entire thing looks like? We have to work through with the git. So we know that we have to initialize the git first. And even before initializing, we would love to know the status of it. There is no git repository here. We shouldn't be initializing it again and again. That's why I check this. And then I go ahead and say git init to initialize my git repository. There we go. Git is being initialized. And if I go ahead and check the git status now, it says one untracked file is there. We can quickly go ahead and do the commit. So I'm going to go ahead and say git uh, commit. And we'll be using dash am to quickly go ahead and add this. And we're going to say add index file. Looks good. All right. So, all right. Git commit. Oh, we forgot to add. But it should be done. Add index file. Nothing to be added. What happened? Should be working fine. Okay. All right. I'm going to add this. Git add. And now we should be able to, usually it works, but don't know why it doesn't work. Add index file and there we go. Now it's being updated. Let's go ahead and check how it looks like on to this one. Let's check the, this one looks good. And we are on what branch? I would love to know that as well because this will be useful in a minute. We'll be going with the git branch. We are on the master branch. All right. Now, let's just say this is a very complex project in itself. and I want to save it on the GitHub itself. How does that look like and how does that process work, work? And do I understand this whole thing? Now, from the Git itself, you can just go ahead, click on this and create a new repository. And we are going to call this one is uh, learn-git. And this is available because it's unique for my account. You will be able to do exactly the same because it will be unique for your account. Then we have to provide a description a test to learn git. There we go. You can keep your repository public or you can keep it private. As of now, I'll keep it public, but I'm obviously going to be deleting it later on. You can go ahead and add readme file. We'll talk about the readme files in a minute. But uh, git ignore, we have already worked through with that. We don't want to push the git ignore from here as well. Although GitHub provides you an option to do so. We're not going to be touching licensing as of now, and I'll be just removing this. This is one plugin that I actually go ahead and use this, but it's fine. You will not have this option. This is for me, my uh, personal professional use. All right, so we're going to go ahead and simply say create repository. Now, the moment you create a repository, you will be provided with some of the commands, and we need to talk about these commands. These are very important one. So if you notice here, or create a new repository in the command line, we know a lot of these commands. First of all, the commands where we see all of this things like echo. Can I zoom this some more? There we go. 
So if you go ahead and see this, this echo command, it does nothing. It just creates a readme file. In our case, uh, we have this file already being created. Our index.html is already here. I'm fine with that. Then it says git init. I don't need to do it again because I have initialized my repository. I have seen so many students and beginners who mindlessly copy paste these commands. They don't understand what they are doing. That's a bad habit. You know exactly now. Then it says git add readme. So in our case, it will be add index or dot, whatever you want to use. Then it says git commit. We have also made our commit. Now this command says git branch dash m main. Now don't worry, this dash m is just to rename your existing branch. Git knows it very well, just before I shared this incident, that it used to be called everything as master. Git don't want that. Git want you to change this as main, although there is nothing wrong in pushing the master, but it's not an idle situation. So we're going to use this command dash m to change the branch name. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we just have the master, so we can just go ahead and say git branch and we can use dash capital M and we can change it to the main. Suggestions are there as well. So now if I go ahead and do this and check the branch, I am on the main branch. Literally just a command to rename the branch. Now then we have something known as git remote add origin and then this long name which is ending with the git and then it says git push dash u origin main. This is the command which is actually responsible for pushing your code, not just pushing your code but actually to streamline your flow. Now what is the streamline? What is this happening all up here? This is where we need to study the theoretical part of it. So let's go ahead and study the theoretical part of it. I know a lot of you are not big fan of it, but we need to study of it. Okay. So this is the discussion regarding the GitHub. So let's go ahead and talk more about it. So Git is a software and GitHub is a service to host your Git online. As we saw, there are many other services which are available and GitHub is known just not for hosting all of your softwares and all of your Git information online but it's a collaboration tool, it's used for backup, it's even used for open source and we're gonna have a separate discussion on this open source stuff and how it's helpful to understand the code base and all these things. There are others as well, GitLab I showed you, there is even one, one more, Bitbucket, you can use that. Now a couple of commands that are gonna be coming up uh, very handy, uh, the first one is git clone, we'll talk about that git clone as well in the later on videos, don't worry about that. But first of all, the most important command that we have already studied is uh, git config dash dash global user dot name and provide your username. Similarly, you have to provide the config dash dash global user dot email and provide your email, whatever is your email. Uh, there's no such thing as uh, you're exposing your email or something. It, it's okay. No worries on that. Uh, you have to do your SSH key setup. Uh, and again, remember this, uh, GitHub doesn't allow you to push code with the password. A uh, password based code push is not allowed on the GitHub. Only thing you have to do is configure your SSH. It's not really hard. Try this couple of times and you will be able to succeed. This is how software development learning curve works. You don't see everything into the tutorial or videos or, or something. Sometimes you have to read the documentation and go through with that. Okay. Uh, check your instruction for your OS on the GitHub website. As I showed you, this is the best and updated resource. Uh, all these resources over the time gets outdated. Whatever is the best way, uh, recommended way is available on the GitHub website. All right. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the remote because we have been working with the Git so far. We are comfortable with that on the local host, on our machine. Now it's time that we move on to the remote repository. So a couple of commands that we're going to go through. First of all is remote-v. This command will help you to figure out and see that whether do you have any remote repository being set up. I have my local repository on my system. Remote repository is on the GitHub. So I need to know that whether there is any setup for that or not. And I can just verify that by saying git remote and I can say uh, dash v as an option and it's going to give you an empty result. Empty result simply says, hey, there is no connection, there is no remote configuration being set. And then you have to do is add the name here. So what you have to do is git remote add. That means I want to connect a remote repository. I want to have a connection with them. You have to add a name and I have to add a URL. And if you notice something on the Git website, it just tells you exactly the same. Git remote add, and then this is the origin, and this is the name of this whole website. And it is usually called as origin, uh, but it's just a name. It's just a name that I'm calling it as. So on the GitHub, we are calling this as origin. That's what the name I'm adding in the remote repository. And you'll notice in the next command, it says that push 
Uh, and this, I'll talk about this dash U8. It's a pretty interesting one. But right now, just ignore this. Oh, you are not able to see this. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so this is where it is. Okay. So this remote ad is origin. This is the name of, you can say branch, not really correct, but you can say it as branch. So name of this uh, repository on the GitHub is named as origin. And what I'm saying next is push into this origin from my main, from my main branch. You can change the branches as well. You can say that, hey, uh, production, or you can say deploy branch, whatever the name is, push uh, deploy branch to the origin. That's the most important part. A lot of people just mindlessly copy paste these commands. You don't have to do that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do this. So the step one is to add, then provide a name and the URL. We are calling it as origin, but feel free to change this. The usual thing that you're going to see is uh, git remote add origin. I don't really like to change it because everybody calls their remote repository as origin. That's what the GitHub says in the documentation. So I'm not a bit, big advocate of changing it. So origin and then provide the name and usually like 99.9% .9 of the case, this is going to end up with the dot git. That's, that's the clue of it. Then you have to simply go ahead and say git remote and you can just go ahead and rename uh, old name and new name. So yes, you can go ahead and rename that. There is nothing stopping you. I'm not going to do it, but I'm showing you that yes, the option exists. All you have to do is git remote rename and then rename it from origin to Superman. Nobody's stopping you to do so. And you can go ahead and remove this as well. Git remote, remove the name. So if let's just say you don't want to push it on the same repo, you can go ahead and change the remote name as well. And you can change and push things onto that. Now, the second command that we need to discuss this, we have already got enough discussion on this one, is this one, git push dash u origin main. This is interesting one. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and add this. Now that we know this command, we can actually go ahead and by the way, uh, notice here it says, or push an existing repo uh, from the command line. They actually says, hey, this whole stuff you already know. Only command that you need is to add and configure your remote repository. So that's actually easiest one. And most of the time you're going to see a lot of people just come up here and copy it from here. That's why they have given this copy option directly to you because they know people who really understand the Git, they just need this thing here. And again, you can go with the HTTP version or you can go SSH version. Most of the people prefer the HTTP version. SSH version, although we have configured SSH for authentication and pushing the code, I usually prefer the HTTP method and they also recommend this one here. So what we can do is simply go ahead and copy this. Now we know the command. We know what's the meaning of it. We understand this command. So let's go ahead and say that git remote add and just go with that. So we're going to say git remote add and we're going to call this one as origin and then paste this one. So this is what we have. Now let's go ahead and try to enter and see what happens. All right nothing happens. That's good news. And if I go ahead and say git remote v, now it gives me that there is an origin which we have set up. This is for fetch and this is for push. push. That means if I want to send any code, this is the remote repository that's, that will be used. If I want to fetch anything, this is the remote repository that will be used. Uh, usually they are like again in 99% of the case, they are the same, but hey, there's nothing stopping you to change this one as well. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the next next command that we have. So remote origin is being set. Now the next one is git push. And all you have to provide is the name of the remote where I have to push and the branch name which you want to push. In our case, the remote name is origin. Hope you haven't changed it to Superman. And my branch that I'm pushing up is the main. But there is no such compulsion that you have to always push the main branch. You can push the production branch. You can push a bug fix branch. Nobody does that, but maybe, maybe you can do that. And again, we are doing is uh, git push remote and then uh, it, the whole syntax is local branch colon a remote branch. There's no colon involved in this one. You just have to mention that. That's the whole idea. So go ahead and work with that. Now, but in our option on the GitHub, we saw one more option. This is not like I'm telling you just you can do git push and origin and main. But what this dash u option comes up here. Uh, this dash u option is a pretty interesting one. Uh, let's first go ahead and do this uh, directly. So we're going to go ahead and say git push and we're not going to be using the dash u. We'll just go ahead and say origin and main. Now, if I just go ahead and use push origin and main, notice what happens when I go ahead and hit enter. It tries to just push the code on the GitHub. All right, without dash u option, we were able to push it. So what's wrong in this? Nothing actually. I can go ahead and reload here. 
and the whole code is being pushed and I can see my index file and the code that I have, which is very small code, I have this code on my repository. So why we bother even about having this dash u option? Let me show you that. If I open up this code file and let's go into the code part and index file, let's open this up. Eventually, after some time, I realized I need to add paragraph of 30 words in my code and there we go. We have added the paragraph. What do we want to do next? We obviously want to add this. So we're gonna go ahead and say git add index.html. We have added this. We want to have the commit. We're gonna go ahead and say git commit and we're gonna say this time we have uh, add paragraph to code. There we go. We have committed this. So this commit is done and nice. What do we do after that? Uh, we obviously have already got the remote set so I can check this. I don't need to do this again and again. Remote repository is set being once or if you're updating, you can set it again, but most of the time it's just one. What if I do want to push it now? Can I push it directly? If I go ahead and say git push and no origin, no main, can I do this? It says, I don't know what you're trying to push. The current branch main has no upstream branch. Interesting, what this upstream is. To push the current branch and set the remote as upstream, use git push dash dash set upstream origin main. So what's this upstream is and what do I need to know about? So whenever you are actually trying to get push, you obviously are setting a stream with some of the remote repository and so that later on you can just push this, you have to set these options and that's exactly what the GitHub was trying to do with all of us. So if you see this git push dash u origin main, dash u set ups an upstream that allows you to run the future command, the future command of git push so that you don't have to run this git push origin main again again. What we're doing is we are setting an upstream. We are linking the origin with the main so that whenever you do a push automatically from this branch, whenever you run the command uh, git push, it automatically links the upstream origin with the main and pushes the code on the GitHub. It will not happen on the other branches because there the upstream is not linked. That's why you are completely safe to just do this. And in fact, why would you run the command of git push there? but this is the linking process. Uh, the git push in the future will directly push the code to the GitHub. That's the whole idea. So in case you want that accidentally, I should not be able to push this. Uh, don't use the dash u option, but if you want that, hey, this is a little bit overwhelming for me, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the upstream. You can use the set upstream option just like this. That's completely valid. But since GitHub loves this to be a little bit of the shortcut, that's why they give you dash u. It's exactly the same, no changes at all. So if I go ahead and do this, uh, it will obviously push the code, but from now onwards, what I can do is I can update more stuff. So let's just say we are gonna use unordered list. We'll be having a list item, uh, maybe three of them. And we're gonna say home, and again, about us. And we're gonna go ahead and say contact us. So we have added a navigation bar or list. Now obviously we want to add and commit on that. Let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna say git add index file, just like this. We're gonna go ahead and say git commit. And we're gonna say add, what do I do? Uh, commit, hmm, add a list. And by the way, do you know that I can actually run multiple cursors here? I don't know, I forgot the shortcuts. Yeah, there we go. So you can see, I can, I can write on the two places at once. This is the most amazing. So notice here. Yeah, it doesn't make sense here, but yeah, that, that's the option. I've never seen that in any other terminal. <laughs> Anyways, having just fun with the terminal. Okay, so we have added the list. All right. And now I can literally go ahead and do git push. No option, nothing is required. Uh, these all are grayed out, they are not commands. And I can do this. It does the pushing automatically for me. So this is really, really nice thing to work on with. By the way, you can just go ahead and check this out. If I go ahead and do a refresh and we're gonna do index HTML and we can see, yeah, my amazing important list is now here. All right, uh, let's go ahead and work on with this and understand a little bit more of that. So uh, when you clone a repo, we need to learn a little bit about cloning of the repo. We'll be doing that and we can switch the branches and all of these things. Uh, these things, definitely we are going to study a little bit later on that how we can actually fetch some of the repos, uh, how we can bring some of the existing code on our repository, on our local system, can understand the branching and all of that. Uh, we'll understand the bit of the commands on that. 
But first, uh, let me go ahead and show you some of the interesting stuff. So if you go ahead, this is how it looks like on the remote repository. Now, just like every web server picks up the index.html file, similarly on to the GitHub, what you can do is you can add a readme file. This readme file has a special extension known as .md, shortcut for markdown. And the markdown syntax, probably I'll create a crash course or something some other day. But right now, this is just your heading. So we're going to say something like this, learn about Git and GitHub. And we're going to simply say something like this. Yeah, we have to do this. And we can go ahead and add some of the code bases as well. Uh, maybe if you don't like this, you don't have to do this. Just, this is just fun. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that, yes, you can write codes here as well, just like this. No, no need of Python. All right. So this looks OK. We don't need this. Come on. There we go. So whatever you want to write in the Markdown file, you can just go ahead and do this. Now let's just go ahead and add this. We're going to go ahead and add readme.md. And we're going to commit this. We're going to simply go ahead and say this. Git add. Add readme file. And I can just go ahead and simply do git push. Nothing else. Once you actually go ahead and push this file, then what you're going to notice is that GitHub automatically picks up this readme file and shows you some stuff here on the home page of the repository. That's why it's required. And you can see the code that I wrote, now you have the copy command. That's, that's the GitHub charm of it, that they are trying to throw on top of it. But anyways, you now understand this whole thing. Now coming back onto the part where we wanted to discuss this part, that how you can bring some of the pull request and all these repositories and all these things. So there are a couple of more commands and we have to go through with this. So the first command that you're going to go through is the top one, which is this one. So you can just run the command git clone and then the URL of any repository that you want. And you can bring that code onto your system so that you can understand it better and go through with that. Let's see if we have some of the code repository and we can work with that. So I'll go on to my code base and I'll try to find something which is a little bit short and small. I'm pretty sure there are thousands of this thing. So we're going to go ahead and use something. Okay, I did made a series on Golang. Maybe you want Golang source code. So what we can do is we have so much of the source code onto this one. And I want that to see and bring all of this in here. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, onto the code, I can go ahead and download the zip. But since we are on the, the, are the Git users and we are pretty professional now, I can just go ahead and copy this HTTPS. By the way, there is SSH, GitHub CLI, other options as well. You can install the GH utility. I'll use the GitHub uh, HTTPS method and I can just go ahead and copy this. Now we can clone this on wherever we like. Let's go ahead and move on to one directory back. If I do an ls, I have one, two, three. We have already seen that. But I can run the command of git clone and paste this. So now whatever is there on this repository will actually be brought down. Uh, you can see it's getting downloaded. If I do a quick ls, uh, this is one here. Uh, notice here, golang. I can just go ahead and open this folder up here. And this is the golang. So entire code base is now with me and I can open this up in my favorite editor, go ahead and work with this and whatever I want to do, this is the code file that I have. I can go ahead and work with this. So that's the whole idea behind having this entire uh, git clone command and all these things. Uh, but what will happen is uh, maybe multiple people are working on the same repositories and things like that. So sometimes what happens is uh, we need to understand this with the notes itself is Let's just say you and your friend are working on some remote repository. Uh, so there are a couple of things which we have already noticed. Now we understand this entire flow that there is something known as working area where the work is going on. You haven't staged it, committed or anything. Then we saw that there is a staging area where we stage the changes. Staging doesn't mean commit. You haven't committed that. But once the staging area is done, we actually commit the code. And this is known as your local repo. So everything we have done so far before the GitHub introduction, that is your local repository. And once you're done with the local repository, you obviously go ahead and push the code on the GitHub. That is known as your repo remote repository. So all this is, this is your limit of the working repository. 
This is the limit of your staging area. This is the limit of your local repository. And this is the limit of your repo. Now imagine this scenario. You and your colleague are working on the same code basis and you are making the push directly on the GitHub. Everybody does that. There is nothing exception in that. But let's just say you are building a index file and your friend is building a navigation bar. And you realize that, hey, before pushing the index file or before pushing the footer, I would like to grab all the things which is updated on the GitHub so that I can make a fresh uh, push onto the GitHub repo. Now you will learn a couple of commands onto that. And in fact, by the way, if you look onto this one, uh, if I open up my VS code, you'll see these commands. If you just click on this source control, you'll see these commands here as well. I hope you can see that there is a pull, there is a push, and there's a fetch. All these commands are here. So it's not like something alien. There's a fetch here and there's a pull here. Both of these commands actually bring the code from the connected remote repository to your code base. Not the git clone. Git clone just brings it at one at a time. But if you are actively contributing in the repository, uh, and then the things are different. So what we have seen right now, Golang, it is just bringing the code. But here, since we are actively contributing in this remote repository, some of the other guys might have done that. So if pull and fetch both brings the updated code from the remote repository, what's the difference between them? There is a difference. Okay, when you run the command git fetch, this actually gets the info, but don't put the things in my work. So what it's doing is it just brings everything into your local repository, but hasn't brought in the work into your work area yet. When you do the git pull command, it actually gets all the information from the remote repository and moves it into your working area. And yes, there are use cases for both of them. There are scenarios where you want to just fetch. You don't want to pull it into your code base yet. Uh, maybe you want to first verify, is it breaking my code or uh, is it not touching my code? Is it not overwriting my code? If once you are done with that, then you go ahead and do the git pull. Again, depends on which company you are working, what workflow you are going through. Just remember, the git fetch actually uh, gets the info but doesn't put the things into your work, while on the git pull, it actually gets all the things. Uh, by the way, uh, git uh, pull is a, a combination command. What it does is git fetch and git merge. So yes, you get it right. All the work that you're seeing in the remote repository, uh, you first do the git fetch and then to bring it from here into working, you do the git merge. Uh, but most of the time, we just run the git pull. And again, git pull origin main, uh, changes will be merged to the main branch, whatever is there in the origin. So just keep in mind, uh, these are some of the common things that you'll be seeing. As long as you remember this whole diagram, uh, you'll be all fine in bringing any of the code into your local repository. A uh, couple of more discussion about uh, the things uh, before we go ahead. Uh, that GitHub has actually a lot more feature. I'll walk you through with some of the features. It has features like adding the collaborators. Multiple people can work on the same file. You should be the owner of the repository. A readme file, we have already gone through with that. Markdown briefly touched on to this one. You can, by the way, add your own gist, gist, whatever you call that. Uh, these are code snippets. It has options like code spaces. It has options like dev container. Let me show you where it is. So uh, what the options are, if I go ahead and open up the same uh, Golang, what you can do is instead of the code, you can actually run the code space as well. So what's this code space? It's a kind of a VM. It's kind of a virtual machine. So, and virtual machine is not an ordinary virtual machine here. This is configured based on what kind of code you are having. So this code requires Golang setup. So it will open up a dev container or a virtual machine, which will have the configuration and the installation of the Golang. If you open up a repository in code space, which is something like React, Next.js, or some JavaScript, -y, uh, then it will open up the code space like that. So GitHub is a pretty more powerful tool. And you can go ahead and configure this repository however you like. I'll not go much deep into that. I've already talked about it on my channel. So no, this is not the time to talk more about it. Now, a couple of things. If you want to play more around it, I'll definitely walk through with this. Now, let me share one more incident with this uh, you. So you can see on my uh, repository, we have this open source contribution. So let me just warn you something about it before we move into the next video and talk more about on the situation. So GitHub has a way uh, in which you, there are some of the code bases which are open source and you can contribute your code onto that code base. Now people, I don't know what they were thinking, uh, they thought that it would be really cool if I go ahead and update these small readme files and put up the contribution. All these contributions are spam contribution. They are not adding something, something to the code. They are not 
putting value into the code base and they started doing all these update readme files and all of that and the entire express.js repository was like spammed with it not a good idea so i instead to drive the traffic in sarcasm i said hey here is your open source contribution all those who want to spam or something just go ahead and do this people didn't understood that sarcasm and started to spam on this repository as well but that was okay because it was created for this intentional purpose and you can see i still have 220 commits there are still pull request and all these things i'll walk you through how these pull request and all these things are made uh, but that's okay uh, just remember you don't have to do this don't spam anything uh, if you want to contribute add value that's the whole idea so anyways i hope you uh, you have enjoyed this small talk and small lecture not small really big one but now that you have gone through with the whole this thing you don't have any fear about the git and how the things are actually working you are comfortable with the git and the github and how to push your code you understand each and every command why does it exist what role does it play is it a shortcut or how does it work and that's my goal to make you comfortable with the git that's my number one priority that's it for this video let's catch up in next video